Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. Thank you so much for tuning in to join us for another great edition today. Today we are going to be speaking about health and we are joined by Dr. Ken Snyder and he's the dental clinic director at St. Vincent de Paul here in the Valley. So wonderful to have you, Dr. Oh, Snyder. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Happy to be here. Yes, it is a pleasure to have you. And as a matter of fact, we had someone on from St. Vincent de Paul not too long ago, and I came down and did a tour of the facility um, and got the opportunity to meet you and see mm -hmm. the wonderful, wonderful work that you're doing down at St. Vincent de Paul for some of our, uh, some of our inner city people here that don't have access to dental care. Yes. So would you mind telling just a little bit about yourself and what, what it is that you do at oh, St. Vincent de Paul? Sure. Well, uh, my background is I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, my wife and I met there at college, and we moved out to Arizona in 1975, and we have five children. We've raised them all out here, and I was in private practice for quite a while, but as of uh, July 6th of this year, mm -hmm. it'll be 20 years that I've been at St. Vincent de Paul. Wow. And yeah, it's it's been a it's been a blessing. I mean, it's just uh, the spirit there and the mission, as you mentioned, is to serve the uh, less fortunate in our community, both children and um, adults, of course. And so um, we have a children's dental clinic and we have an adult dental clinic. And we started out just a half day a week. And interesting enough, um, we get no government funding at all. It's all grants and uh, what falls out of the kids' pockets when we lean them back for uh, treatment. <laughs> and so, no, I'm kidding. We, we give that back. To, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we give that back to them. <laughs> but, um, and so we've grown now and we have, it, it's such a wonderful place. Um, we have dental students from both dental schools uh, that train with us, the one in Mesa and the one in Glendale. We have AEGD residents. We have three of those that are with us for a whole year. And these are students that have uh, graduated from dental school and they want an extra year of training. And we do give them that advanced training because the types of um, patients we see do have advanced needs. Many of them have been neglecting their, their oral cavity for many, many years um, for many uh, reasons. But we also have orthodontic residents, um, and we've put over 400 children through orthodontics um, at our clinic, which actually is more than any clinic in the country, so we're very proud of that. And they are life-changing procedures. Well, and you just won an award, correct, down at St. Vincent de Paul? Yeah, we actually did. Um, wow, we were like blown away. Uh, like I say, we're just a you know, little local clinic, but uh, the Henry Schein Company, which is actually a Fortune 500 company, and they're, they're the world's largest uh, sellers of dental equipment and dental supplies and uh, they looked at 70 clinics throughout the country and we were one of them and they gave them to an independent group uh, to uh, so that none of their employees would have a conflict of interest mm -hmm. um, and so they invited the what they deemed to be the top three to Dallas last month and we were one of those Wow! and uh, one of the clinics was quite large had over 200 employees another one was fairly large we were the only ones that did not receive government funding. And uh, it was one of those, the envelope please. I mean, it was like amazing. <laughs> they had us up on stage and they had all their employees out there, 2,500 employees. And when they announced, um, we were like blown away. So, oh, how wonderful. Yeah, it just, um, and you know, and I always attribute it, I always say I'm just the band leader of a world-class band. I mean, the staff we have down there, the support that we have, and even uh, all the uh, St. Vincent de Paul, whether it's the dining room, whether it's the truck drivers that go out and collect things, people who give, uh, provide clothing, the thrift stores, um, everyone's on a mission. And it's, it's such a, a privilege uh, to be a part of that mission. It is, it truly is. And going down there and seeing you work with the children and even seeing some of the photos of what's happened, it's just, uh, yeah. it's wonderful to know what you're doing. But as we go ahead and go into our first topic here at home, we're speaking about health today, as I mentioned, and our first issue is the state of oral health for children in Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of kids and you see uh, a lot of kids that a lot of us may not have the opportunity to see. What, what is the state of the oral health right now in Arizona and how are we ranked nationally? Yeah, you know, and it's so true. You say sometimes the kids will come in and, and you look at their mouth and you think, gee, every tooth in their mouth must be hurting. And you say, are you in pain? And they, they'll say no. And uh, the reason is they've been in pain for so long they don't even realize that they're still in pain. But um, the, uh, uh, the CDC, uh, the uh, uh, Disease Control, uh, the Center for Disease mm -hmm. Control in Atlanta, the, they put out a, uh, they're always giving statistics and doing surveys, and the latest one for children's dental health was in 2014. Okay. And we actually ranked um, 
uh, Arizona, Texas, and California were at the bottom of the list. Oh, no. Believe it or not. Yeah, and they deem that uh, between 70 and 75 percent of third graders, usually when they do these studies, they pick a grade level to make everything an even playing field. And uh, 70 to 75 percent of um, third graders in our state have active dental decay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And 31 percent of the children um, have never even seen a dentist. Wow. So that's almost a third. So it is, um, but we are making strides. There's been some things that have happened in the last two years. So we're getting better, but there's still a long ways to go. Yeah. What What is it that's that that is actually contributing to the dental decay of these children? Why are the numbers so high? What do you What do you think the factors, other than of course, access to to dental prov pr providers? What, what is the biggest issues that you think is causing it? Yeah, I think one, um, well, first of all, let me medicalize um, dental decay. Most people think of, you know, medicines over here and dentals over here, but dental decay is actually an active infection of the body. In fact, it's uh, deemed to be the most prevalent childhood disease. Uh, some say five times, um, some studies have shown five times is more prevalent than asthma, which is number two on the list. Wow. So it's, it's huge. Um, and I think a lot of the problems are, um, like you say, of course, access to care. But I think a lot of parents aren't aware of um, that you know the how much diet and the sugar uh, that we have even many schools and, and thank god they're starting to take uh, some of these vending machines out kids are spending their lunch money on vending machines for candy bars and soda pop uh, parents are putting their infants to bed with uh, sugar water or even um, milk which has a lot of sugar and you should never put the baby to sleep and let the bottle in their mouth overnight um, all the bacteria um, you know uh, breeds and, and of course the sugar is the main uh, fuel supply for the bacteria so yeah it, it's devastating what happens it is I guess that's something to consider is that this generation there's so much more sugar in all of our food oh, yeah I mean there's sugar in everything now from chips to bread to to any kind of drink or carbonated beverage and that yeah. probably is having a huge effect on the dental health and then one of the the issues is probably we could do we, we have a lot of we have a very we have a lot of immigrants in our state mm -hmm. and in other in other countries dental care is not as prevalent as it is here it's not, and that leads um, to a large part of the problem as well, because most of the communities here, not all, but most have fluoride in the water, mm. which helps prevent decay, but a lot of the immigrants coming in, of course, have not been exposed to that, wow. so their teeth are a lot more susceptible to um, decaying than if you had the, the fluoride. So if you grow up with it in the water, then it's your, you, your body becomes accustomed to it, but if you just get exposed to it, it's more of an effect on your teeth um, then? Well, yeah, if, if actually if you have it in the water, uh, even sometimes, you know, when you're, you're still in utero so that the tissues are being formed already, and in an early childhood when the uh, dental tissues are being formed for like the permanent teeth, if that fluoride is already in your system, you know, it'll be incorporated into the uh, teeth themselves. Otherwise, um, like the fluoride, uh, and, and they're very helpful, fluoride varnish and fluoride applications, they only go a few millimeters, uh, not even millimeters, or just a few microns okay. into the outer layer and it's a protective layer but it's not throughout yeah okay because it my dentist does that she always puts a layer of after I go get my teeth cleaning she puts a layer of fluoride on my teeth so I always wondered what that is <laughs> I believed her I've never had a cavity yeah. so yeah. I was like okay <laughs> so that's interesting and I'm learning something new with you today um, what what is the price that our children are paying because of of the poor dental health what how is it affecting their everyday lives yeah um, Again, there's studies and different studies conflict or whatnot, but some studies have shown, so first of all, um, academically, it uh, impairs them because some studies have shown as many as 52 million hours, school hours a year are lost um, in the nation uh, on kids missing school. In fact, nurses will say it's the number one reason why they miss school is due to dental pain or dental infection. So, and, and the other thing is if the child's sitting there in pain because the parent can't afford to send them somewhere, um, if you're if you're in pain you can't concentrate and if you can't concentrate you can't learn and if you can't learn um, in the early grades that kind of follows you throughout life um, self-esteem is huge um, we see kids and you saw some of the pictures I showed you on your visit oh my goodness, where yes. yeah the, the front teeth and the, the kids don't want to raise their hand in class to answer because they don't want it drawn to them um, sometimes when they're talking to us even when they first come in they hold their hand up um, because they you know can you imagine picture day smiling um, mm. you know they don't want to do that so that that part is huge now medically um, there's all kinds of problems as well because uh, poor oral health, oral health is actually the gateway to overall health. 
And so it sets these kids up to become uh, diabetic. And of course, the increased sugar in the diet does that too. I mm -hmm. mean, we used to think of diabetics as somebody's grandma or grandpa or something. Well, now that was overweight <laughs> and kind of hunched yeah. over the chair. Yeah, exactly. Taking their insulin every day. Yeah, but now, it's, now it's children. It's ever, it I is. Mean, it's children. It's truly you know? become yeah. an epidemic. And we're actually going to be speaking about the the oral health effects here in just a, in just a few moments. But before we get into that, one of the it, it begins whenever they're baby. Mm -hmm. um, and many people, I'm sure, don't take the time to brush their baby's teeth. Why are those so important, and yeah. why is it so important to take care of those for children whenever well, they're infants? It's very um, important. In fact, one of the things we do, and we started a program, and maybe uh, we'll get into it a little bit, where we're actually, um, so the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, they recommend that every child have a dental home by age one. And we are actually, um, I guess we can get into it now, we're actually taking, um, pregnant moms on different shelters are sending them to us, we're cleaning up the mother's mouth before the baby's ever born because uh, there's uh, evidence now that that's the way actually the bacteria that cause decay is transferred from the mother to the child. Wow. So if we get the mother's teeth cleaned up before the baby's born, and it can be through kissing, hugging, anything. Um, so then once um, we tell the mother, once the baby's born, to bring them in, as soon as you see the first tooth, bring them in, we'll do a fluoride varnish, and every three months after that. But what we also tell them is that every time you change the baby's diaper, take a washcloth or a gauze, wet it, and wipe the baby's teeth. Every time you change the diaper, wipe their teeth. And so it kind of, because, you know, we kind of get concerned with one end, the meantime. <laughs> yes, exactly. You need to be both ends you should be concerned yeah, about. Well, that's that's actually, so that is a great, uh, it's probably a great way to also start a habit for the for the parents themselves and also for the children, because if they're yeah. used to also, it's, I, I, I hate likening it to that, but like even with with, with, uh, with animals, if you, if you consistently have your hand inside of their mouth or on their paws where they're normally sensitive, where kids might not want something stuck inside their mouth, it probably gets them used to that sensation of someone putting their finger inside of your mouth and cleaning it. It does. In fact, sometimes when the kids first come in, the real young kids for their first dental uh, you know, exam, I'll actually do the exam with the toothbrush because they'll open up for that. Or if you have a mirror or an instrument or something. They're scared. Yeah, they're scared, but they all know a toothbrush. So I'll go ahead and do the exam with the toothbrush and I can get you know, an uh, assessment for them. But um, yeah, you're right. And then the other thing that too, parents, like even when kids get to be three or four, they say, well, go get your toothbrush and brush your teeth. And the kids do, they want to. But what you really should do is after they're done, say, oh, let mommy or daddy help. And then you go and make sure you're doing it right. Cause kids will, you know, they're- Yeah, they're- Yeah. <laughs> they just think you get to go like this, right? I stuck in my up. mouth, I'm exactly. done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very true, but it's probably conditioning them for whenever they come to see a dentist, then they're they're used to someone else putting, actually working with them in their oral health. So It helps a lot. Yeah. That is, and I'm sure even more important than anything is example and mom and dad brushing their mm -hmm. teeth every day. And, and I guess be, the, it, we're at the end here of this segment, but just really quick, one thing I know that my dentist is always gets on me about is flossing. How important is flossing uh, and how often should that be done, especially for kids? Yeah, tremendous. Um, I recommend at least twice a day. And see, here's what happens. If you think about it, each tooth has five sides. The side you bite on, the side that faces the cheek, the side that faces the tongue, and you can readily brush those. But the two sides you can't brush are the sides that face other teeth. And mm. this is one of the main areas where food will trap. And the only way you could brush it would be if you had a brush with one bristle, one really thin bristle. And that's what floss is. <laughs> it's a, so you can get in yeah. there. But um, actually, most cavities start in between the teeth. So it is very important, yeah. Yes, no, I know my, my dentist, she's always, Vanessa, you need to floss more. I'm like, I'm trying, doctor. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> yes, but wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us for this first segment, Dr. Snyder. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much at home for watching. If you have any questions, the information has been displayed at the bottom of the screen. But please don't go anywhere because we'll be right back after this short message. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. 
and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you just happen to be joining us today, we are here with Dr. Ken Snyder, and he's the dental clinic director for St. Vincent de Paul. Thank you so much oh, for staying with us, thank Dr. You, Snyder. Thank you, Vanessa, yeah. Pleasure to have you. We were just speaking about the state of oral health for children in Arizona and how unfortunate it is that we're in the, we're in the bottom the bottom number is of ranking yeah. according to the CDC. Are, yeah. So hopefully by watching this, there's a little bit of encouragement if you have children or know any children in your life to help get them in the good habit of starting to brush their teeth. And more importantly, because now we're gonna speak about how oral health affects general health, because as they move on in their life, how important that's gonna be for them and how that's really gonna set up a lot of fundamental health mm -hmm. benefits and, and really just get them in a good pattern and, and, and having good health. Um, what are some of the common dental issues that you find in adults? Um, most adults, uh, the, the, the patients we see, um, basically uh, did, were not able to seek treatment when they were children. They didn't have treatment, so things have actually gotten worse. Now, baby teeth are very important. A lot of times pa parents will think, well, it's only a baby tooth, why do I take it out? But baby teeth actually save the spot for the permanent tooth to come in oh, and okay. guides them in. Yeah. And also it helps the child to, you know, proper nutrition, be able to chew their food properly and things like that. And so we see a lot of tremendous orthodontic problems that were created way back when um, in adults um, because they didn't have uh, care when they were children. Another thing is the fear of a dentist. Um, a lot of kids, uh, if you wait until something hurts, which a lot of, um, you know, unfortunately the segment of the population we treat, they, they have no alternative. Um, if you wait till something hurts, then your first appointment is going to probably be an extraction or if the, it's a permanent tooth, it might be a root canal or something that's not that pleasant because you're already in pain, it's hard to get you numb, there's just so many factors. But if we can get kids in to start for their checkups, the kids today by far don't have the fear like my generation had of the <laughs> dentist. <laughs> well, because you mixture that, that, you know, sitting in a chair and the scary dentist coming in and with yeah. a drill and, you know, getting in there. I think we've all seen some sort of parody of that. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that. I've seen you in action. He's not frightening. <laughs> some people are scared, though. I know that I have a couple family members that just, they did not like oh, yeah. the dentist and it, they yeah. were horrified of going and we grew up going to the dentist. So it wasn't that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure where that fear comes from. I, I, feel, I don't know. I, and I think, um, well, one time, so DDS, Doctor of Dental Surgery, uh -huh. um, it indicated surgery. And so, and uh, again, back in, you know, even my parents' generation, basically you waited till something hurt, you went and you had it out, and it was surgery. Where now, in fact, a lot of the schools are switching over to DMD, which is Doctor of Medical Dentistry. Okay. So the emphasis today is so much more on saving your teeth. Preventative. Preventative, yeah, right from the start. And um, so, the, and, and also again, the medical dental connection, you know, that um, it's all uh, one thing that we have to deal with. No, absolutely. And so what are some of the, um, what are some of the biggest health issues and concerns whenever it comes to your oral health and how it affects the rest of your body? Well, like I said earlier, um, dental decay is an active infection in your body. And so, just like any other infection, it can lead to you know so many different things. It's definitely been shown to be a key factor in uh, the development of diabetes and heart disease. Um, we do a cancer uh, screening on every patient that comes in. Now, um, one of the areas where cancer will first show up, even if it starts somewhere else, is in the mouth, because mm. uh, the mouth has such a rich supply of blood, and uh, the cancer cells will metastasize to areas in the mouth, even if they started somewhere else. But we do see um, cancers in the mouth, you know, so these are all very important. We just had a patient, um, I just, uh, it was kind of an interesting situation. Uh, she's in her 40s and she needs a heart valve replacement. Mm -hmm. And Mayo Clinic is willing to do that um, per bono. But before they would even see her or even think about it, they need to get her mouth cleaned up because with the infection, you can't put the heart valve in there with the infection going through your mouth. Even every time you eat something, um, wow. bacteria goes through your bloodstream, you know? So um, we are going to see her. And what's interesting is she is uh, a Vietnamese and needs an interpreter. So we are back and forth with the interpreter and getting everything lined up. Um, uh, another thing that's quite common, uh, we have a diabetic clinic, a wellness clinic we uh -huh. call it at St. Vincent de Paul. And, um, so a lot of times, like they have what's called the A1C, which many people are now becoming familiar with. It's a, a test they can do on your blood to see what your sugar level is and if you're pre-diabetic mm -hmm. or diabetic. 
And a lot of times before you can have dental work, you need to have your A1C down to a certain level. But because some patients have so much infection in their mouth, it's hard for them to get their A1C down to that level. Wow. And so it's kind of sometimes what comes first, the horse or the cart. And sometimes we almost have to get them in, do the surgery, even though it's a little risky because without it, they'll never get their A1C level down, you know, so it, it all goes um, hand in hand, you know, the, the oral health and the overall health. That's something that, see, you get to see it firsthand, and those are great examples of actual instances where it's affecting your overall health, because I, I, I probably until recently, I feel as though, like you said, in the past generation, it was kind of, a, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. That's a very, you know, my grandfather lived by that, and it just, you know, if, if you don't need to fix it, don't worry about it. Um, I mean, is, is this is this a new realization, how important oral health is on the overall health? Is it something that's been around a long time, or are they finally starting to see the correlation? Yeah, I think it's coming more to the forefront. Um, and I think uh, dentists and uh, physicians are working more hand in hand, looking at the total patient, not this is our little area, and you know, this is your little area. And you know, I, I think that's like, you know, uh, very essential to have that happen. In fact, one of the things we suggest, so, um, most children, uh, until they get school age, um, and school nurses are terrific. I mean, they are huge advocates. They're mm -hmm. the ones who get a lot of the kids. Like at our children's clinic, we have over 80 schools that the nurses identify the kids with need wow. and get them down there. Um, so, but what happens is that um, most, um, like I say, the, uh, when the kids go uh, to the physician, uh, they'll go to the physician a lot sooner than they will. Like they'll go for well baby checks, this, that, whatever. And that's a great uh, opportunity for physicians or their assistants to put fluoride varnish on the children's teeth because they might be six or seven before they get to school and they bring them to the dentist. And by then a lot of damage has been done. So we're advocating like at a lot of the immunization centers, like when they get their immunizations, let's okay. make fluoride varnish just like part of that, that deal. Wow. You know? That is wonderful. Yeah. And that way they start young. Mm -hmm. That is, it's very important. Um, what are some of the barriers that adults have in obtaining oral health? And uh, there's quite a few. Um, like most good parents, the kids come first. You know, they neglect mm. themselves. Yes. <laughs> um, a lot of people who are working, um, they're, uh, you know, the, the different companies are cutting back on health insurance and especially, you know, dental insurance and things like that. Uh, fear of the dentist, you know, is huge. And obviously, uh, you know, the, the financial part. I mean, dentistry today is really, really expensive. And it's sad that that's the way it is, but it, it really is. And so um, thank God for clinics like ours and others. And there's many, many wonderful clinics out there, but the need is tremendous. Like at our clinic, um, the way we handle, because the need is tremendous, we have a, we call it a lottery system, mm. where four times a year, um, adult patients can put their name in the lottery, either online or they, we have a little box down there that they can fill out the form and put in. And so uh, every quarter we draw out um, names of people and it's all fair and square. Um, and so we're able to maybe take on 150 new patients each quarter okay. because we do complete treatment plans. It's not an emergency clinic. We do see emergencies, but we, we don't just get you out of pain and then yeah. next time you're in pain, come back. Yeah. We you know get you one complete go round and then we give them a list of low cost places where like the hygiene schools net where they can follow up. But we'll have each quarter, we'll have about 2000 names wow. in that box. So wow. the need's tremendous and we're expanding um, we recently did a little expansion. We're hoping to do more to take on more um, patients, but the need is always going to be there, and that's that's sad. Yeah. You you just mentioned something though that hygiene school is is that somewhere that people can go if they financially or maybe struggling a little bit, but they want to go get their teeth taken care of, and that's a more effect cost effective. Yeah, as far way. as getting your cleaning and things like that, okay, um, it really is. In fact, we have three different hygiene schools where the hygienists will train with us. Like they might come one day a week, okay. but the other days there are places like um, Phoenix College and that um, where they can go and sign up and get their teeth cleaned, and I think. I think it's only like ten dollars or something oh, like that. Oh, how great! So, well, that's yeah. a great community resource then, if people can't afford or they don't have dental insurance, because under even under our new healthcare system, you're not required to have dental insurance. That's yeah. that's that's optional. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. they don't necessarily have dental insurance, and it is expensive. It is, so and, and most insurances only cover a portion. They do. So you may have still insurance, but yeah. 
Yeah, there's still something. So that's something that's very important for people to be aware of. So, doctor, if people are at home and they they don't they don't have a nice daily routine, what would you suggest is a good healthy daily routine for an adult um, that gets up in the morning until they go to bed at night? And what is kind of some of your key factors that they should follow? that they themselves in their own lives can can take care of? Well, um, actually, of course, you know, brush after every meal. Yeah. <laughs> We've been preaching that forever. I would suggest, you know, flossing after breakfast and then again before you um, go to bed at night. But, you know, there's, there's about three or four key things that if people did, um, they'd be unbelievably healthy. One, uh, most of us don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. We're in a state of dehydration. Most of us don't get enough sleep. We're in a um, state of sleep deprivation, believe it or not. We're, we don't realize it, but we are. Mm -hmm. um, proper nutrition, you know, a good healthy diet. And we all know, I mean, you don't have to be a point counter or something like that, I think. But we all know, hey, this is good, this isn't. I mean, you know, just uh, the basic uh, moderation. And then I think the other thing, and I believe this with all my heart, is each day do something that is fun that you enjoy doing just for the sake of doing, not because you feel obligated or you joined a team or a club, just so, it could be anything. Um, and I think if we each uh, did a little of that each day it would be just fine. It would if we all took a little bit of time to kind of step back and just didn't actually enjoy something, correct? Yeah. Um, so it, it is important though to start out in the morning brushing your teeth, correct? Yeah, after breakfast morning. I would say brushing teeth. So floss. after breakfast, yeah. okay, because see that's one thing, I guess it just, it's a, it's a personal, choice but I know that whenever I wake up I just I feel like if I don't like af after I learn the reason that dry mouth happens is because the bacteria is growing yeah. in your mouth there's something about waking up in the morning I'm like I just want to get that bacteria out of my mouth I can feel it and, and I do that as well you know, <laughs> yeah. but then after breakfast I go ahead and and brush again you know and flossing is very very important yes. like I say if you if you don't floss there's 40 percent of your tooth you're never touching and the other the, the areas they uh the side you bite on and the the side facing the cheek and the tongue. Your tongue, your cheek, other food helps to kind of keep those areas clean, yes. to take water, but it's the ones in between where food stays and, and the bacteria form and, and it becomes a problem. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Snyder, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today to discuss some of these issues and for everything that you're doing down at St. Vincent de Paul to help our community and uh, for all the great information. So thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Yes. Please come and visit us yes. again. Yes, oh, I will. I will. I absolutely will. It's <laughs> a bring great your place. Floss. Yes, I will. <laughs> and thank you so much at home for watching. I hope we were able to bring a little bit of joy into your town and we look forward to seeing you as always next week right here. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.